This super easy sculpting tutorial will show you how to use plaster strips to create a mold or a mask of a human face. If you love learning about art, hit that subscribe button and support this public school teacher's side hustle. As far as materials, you are going to need just a couple of things. First, you're going to need a mold of the human face. You can buy these online if you Google plastic mask. Um, there's tons of options. These are only $2 from Blick Art Materials, so that would be really easy to afford for the classroom. Or if you're lucky like me, you have some random mannequins laying around your art room. The second material you will need is plaster cloth, and that is simply gauze that is saturated with plaster of Paris. When you use water, it activates the plaster of Paris, and through time it dries and hardens. I'm taking my strips and cutting them into smaller strips that are more manageable to use, and then I'm going to use a cup of water, and I'm going to drape it over the mold. If you're using a plastic mold like me, don't worry, it won't stick. I tried this out before I made the video and I promise once it dries, it will pop right off. Every material you use will be different and you can actually use plaster strips to form a mold of your own face as well, but never put plaster cloth directly on your skin. You would need some sort of barrier, but this video is not about that, so I'll let some other YouTuber cover the details of this since my mold is plastic and safe to cover. You can see I'm carefully pushing it into the contours of the eye sockets because I want to capture the 3D form of my mask the best I can. I will be doing a few layers and you can do more layers as well and you can also twist the plaster cloth to create your own 3D effect if you want to kind of vary from the form that you have. One of the downsides of creating a mold is everyone's will look the same, so that's something to keep in mind if you're going for a creative look. But if you're using this for decoration or you're using this for a 3D form for painting, there's so many ways you can use this as a creative starting point, although if you're doing this in the classroom, they will all look the same. I'm gonna speed things up a little bit here. I've covered the main facial features that I'm interested in, and I'm going to work my way down to the chin. Now the edges of your plaster is something to consider, and I'm gonna play around in this video of having some edges that aren't perfectly round or rounded to the face. Um, and plaster cloth, depending on how thick it is, is really simple to cut once it dries. So I'm speeding things up to double time here. So if you're thinking, whoa, she's going much faster, it's true because I'm doing a lot of the same thing over and over again. Get into a meditative state because this is really fun. It's really simple and it's a lot of repetition. I'm smoothing mine down to a pretty even consistency, but a fun idea would to be have strips that have several layers so it looked like your plaster mask had bandages or raised areas. And you can break away from the mold by twisting your plaster cloth to create textured eyebrows, deep set wrinkles, and even details in your eyes. It all depends on what you want this outcome to be, what the purpose is. This is just the basics of how to use the plaster cast over a mold, and there's lots of different molds out there that you can use. Something I'd like to try in the future is doing a plaster cast of hands, so hopefully that's something I'll get to do with my students one day soon. This creepy mannequin that I have does have some hair, kind of like that plastic kin looking hair, and I'm not gonna capture that, but it would be fun. It would also be fun to twist and make my own textured hair as well, but I'm just gonna keep kind of the basic rounded oval effect from the top. I am kind of folding my plaster cloth down, and I will experiment with some sticking off the edge plaster strips just to see how it dries uh, once it's all said and done. I feel like my nose has some porous areas that need some water and or more plaster strips. Um, I don't want it to be see-through. I want it to be completely covered. So I will add a little bit more to the nose and a little bit more water. I can actually change the entire shape of the nose here by building up layers of the plaster strips. So again, you keep hearing me say this because I don't like everything to look the same, especially in my classroom. If you wanna break away from that, um, even if you're just gonna paint this, if you wanna break away from the 3D form, build up uh, plaster strips are a really beautiful way to sculpt. Think of it as like a fancy paper mache. Now that I have everything pretty much covered, I'm gonna take a few artistic liberties with the hairline. So I'm gonna do a little bit of work right there around the nose and then moving on. I'm twisting um, and playing around with the edge of my mask because I either need to cut it perfectly, sculpt it perfectly, or add some sort of fun textured variant. I didn't do the ears, that would be a fun challenge. Um, I kind of skipped over them, and I'm just giving it a little bit of a raised surface, playing around with what I can do with the sculpting aspect of this. 
So I'm still dipping it in the water and I did not put down a cover on my table just because visually it looks weird on camera, but I highly recommend that you cover your surface as you're working. And the plaster didn't bother my hands, but wearing gloves would not be a bad idea either. And make sure you wash your hands very carefully uh, before eating and do not <laughs> pour your plaster down the sink. It will turn into a concrete block and you will regret it. So just cleaning up, you need to dump it somewhere that is not gonna clog your plumbing. One last step here, I'm taking a paintbrush with some water on it and filling in some of those porous gaps before I let this dry. My perfectionist brain stopped me and so I went ahead and added a little bit more layers to the chin. How fun would it be to add a a goatee or a beard here. And I'm also going to pay attention a little bit more to the edges of my plaster, covering any gaps. And I'm gonna have a piece, a few pieces actually, that stick off. You'll see it when I pull it off the form, but I do end up trimming and cutting them off because I didn't love how they looked. Um, I wanted them to kind of lay flat, which I could have made work, but I also was curious if plaster cloth was easy to cut after it dried. Turns out it is. So that's a little bit of troubleshooting that you'll see me do kind of towards the end. Speaking of the end, I am doing a second perfectionist layer of water using a brush that I don't care about because the plaster, although I will rinse it, um, a sculpture brush is never the same as a brush you would use for a watercolor or acrylic or oil paint. So I always set brushes aside that I use simply for sculpture. So brushes that maybe are on the end of their journey as a paintbrush. Once you feel that you've covered your surface and it's the 3D form that you would like, let it dry 24 hours on the mold. Once it's completely dry, you'll notice a change in texture. It's not wet anymore. And then the most satisfying part of all is peeling it off your mold. So there are the flaps I was talking about that were sticking off. I could certainly do something with them, but like I said, just went ahead and cut them off just to see what would happen. I was kind of going for like a sun effect I don't know, just a wild hair that I had. They're pretty easy to pull off and I could definitely attach it to like a board, um, create a relief sculpture with some really cool three elements sticking off of it. Okay, here's the fun part. Gonna go ahead and pull and boom, there's the magic 3D form plaster cast using plaster strips. So what's next? Getting out my acrylic paint and painting this in a really creative way. Thank you so much for sticking around and making art with me. And if you're interested in more sculpture tutorials, check these out. Find me on Instagram at thatartteacher underscore machado to see what my students are up to in my classroom. And my website, thatartteacher.com, has full length lesson plans, student examples, all for free.